I'm not afraid of... Today's a very important day for pasta on this show because we're learning how to make bolognese sauce. We've gone through a lot of pasta recipes and we're gonna continue that today but with a very different technique for making pasta sauce than we have learned in the past. This is an important recipe because this technique not only gives you bolognese sauce, it gives you good chili and in a week or two before the Super Bowl, we're gonna be making chili. So the reason I'm doing these two so close to each other is because if you could do one, you could do the other. The only thing that's different is the flavors that kind of go into it. That's what we're getting into today. I think that we're gonna be able to set you up with a really amazing bolognese sauce that isn't too difficult to make. It's more of a technique. It's not like something we have to overthink and add crazy ingredients to. It's very simple stuff. It's carrot, celery, onion, garlic, meat, of course. There's no fresh canned tomato in bolognese sauce. It's a meat sauce, not a tomato sauce. There is tomato paste, and that's kind of going to give us the body that we sort of need for the sauce, but it's basically meat, the tomato paste, and then water, and that's how we're going to make the sauce. It's very simple. It's all in the technique. And today we're going to serve it up with this radiatory pasta. What I like about this is they're shaped like little radiators. And in those are all these crevices that a nice meat sauce is going to be able to sort of sit in and kind of get cozy. But like think about the pasta when you're making this. I want things that have little crevices in them so the sauce can kind of get into. So that's what we got. We got just like a nice Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a $10 bottle of wine. I just went went in there and I said, I'm cooking bolognese sauce. What's a good red wine for that? He gave me this, asked me the price, 10 bucks, I'm good with. And it's actually a good bottle of wine. It's a Chilean Cabernet Sauvignon. First thing we gotta do, which is key to this recipe, is prep the vegetables. And we don't need to really go crazy right now. I wanna, br we don't really need to go crazy right now. We're essentially just breaking these down because we're going to be using food processor. Now, I haven't had a food processor in their past. I just picked this up for the holidays. I wanted to kind of not have a lot of fancy stuff at the start of the show, but I'm gonna start to add more equipment as I see fit to the show to show you how it's used and why it's important. And a food processor, different than a blender, is an important tool to have in the kitchen. It gives you more control over the size of the blend that you want. You can make doughs in a food processor. It's really a little bit more versatile than a blender, but a blender has its own purpose. Basically what I'm gonna do is just dice this up roughly and then keep them separate and then we're gonna blend them in the food processor each individual vegetable one at a time it's not a paste or a liquid it's just a super fine dice All right, so we got our food processor here. Let's do the carrots first. Then we want to pulse this. It's the same size as the ground beef. Chopping the meat, the vegetables, all the same size. onions and the garlic as well. I got my ground beef and I got all my vegetables. 
they're all the same size. It's all gonna brown together. We're gonna develop lots of flavor, lots of brown bits in the pan. And then we can start adding all like the, the wine and all that kind of stuff. Very simple. We're just gonna be patient in cooking this. We're gonna literally cook this in the pot till the moisture pulls out and then that evaporates. When that happens, we're going to then add the beef. The beef is gonna release moisture in the pan as well and we wanna cook that out until that's completely evaporated as well. And then some of the brown bits start to develop at the bottom of the pan. At that point, we're gonna add some tomato paste, about two cups, and really that's when a lot of the flavors start to develop. That's when the bottom of the pan is gonna start to get that nice dark golden brown right before burn. So we want deep, dark flavor minus burnt. It can be tricky, but as long as you're present and you're there and you're watching, it's very hard to really get it to that burnt state, especially because there's a lot of mass in the pan. So we're just gonna be careful. We're gonna show this love. We're gonna be attentive and we're gonna make sure that it's perfect. And if we're patient in the beginning and follow these steps properly, this is a foolproof dish. You'll never screw it up and it'll always be one of the best things you can make. I think I'm done over here. Yeah, I'm about done. We're just gonna take this bad boy over to the stove. That's it, now it's just on the stove. That's gonna cook for three to four hours. And basically the water is gonna evaporate and you just wanna give it a check and if it's getting a little bit too evaporated, add a couple cups of water. It, you can always cook the water out. You don't want it to kind of over reduce and kind of get too thick and clumpy and glazy. You want it to be a nice rich sauce and as it reduces and you add more and it reduces and add more, it sort of helps to develop the flavor of the sauce and give you that nice luscious rich meat sauce that we're looking for. So we're just gonna let that cook and come back to it. About 30 minutes before it's done, we're going to get a pot of water boiling and then cook our pasta and then just finish it like that.
And there you have it. It doesn't take much work, just takes a lot of time. It's rich, it has deep flavor. The more you brown that meat in the beginning, the deeper, more complex flavor the entire sauce is gonna have. If you start the sauce with that meat still like pale, a lot of moisture in there, it's just not gonna have the same depth that you taste when you go out to a restaurant and eat a bolognese sauce. It needs a lot of salt because there's a lot of mass to this. That ground beef, it's gonna be bland if you don't season it properly, so you gotta salt it right, and it's probably gonna take more than you think. You gotta reduce that wine down. All of these things are adding flavor to this sauce. And the fact that all of the vegetables and the meat are ground up real small gives it this really pleasant texture that allows for the sauce to get into all these nooks and crannies in the pasta. You use whatever pasta you like, if you like a spaghetti or a penne or something like that, and there you have it. Leave a comment down below and tell me when. Finish it with some nice Italian bread, a little glass of wine. What more could you ask for? Thanks so much for watching. As always, I appreciate it so, so much. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I know a lot of you have been asking about bolognese and uh, it's really just a lot simpler than I think a lot of people think. There's a method to do it to get that deep, rich flavor that you're always sort of looking for. That's all I got today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.